so uh, why don't we just start? And today's topic is uh, equanimity, which comes uh, as the last practice in the Brahma Viharas. And uh, of course, it is not by accident that it is a last practice. It is, so to say, the practice which purifies all the other Brahma Viharas and purifies, mm -hmm. especially, that is very important to say, why do we practice Brahma Viharas? Because the essence of purity is based in Vedana. When the Vedana, when the sensation, feeling is pure, the mind is pure. Because the mind is controlled by a feeling, by sensation. This is very important. And this is also a very important principle in Chinese Indian medicine. Hmm? The health of sensation, in Samkhya you have the same principle, the health of sensations, of feelings, is the base for the mental and physical health altogether. Hmm? The uh, mental and physical health depends to great extent on the health of our sensations. This is unfortunately not enough emphasized in the modern medicine. But the ancients were, even the Greeks, were very much aware that the harmony and the basically health is harmony is based on the harmony of sensations. Why? From the uh, Buddhist point of view, it is because due to attachment to sensations and due to not handling sensation in a proper way, we are creating karma. Karma is based on, so to say, on holding, grasping, thirsting for sensations. And uh, to purify the karma, the process of purifying the karma is also the process of purifying the mind. And uh, in Buddhism, this is, among others, the very powerful means of, for purifying the mind, purifying the karma, is the practice of the four Brahma Viharas. And in the four Brahma Viharas, the Upeksha is the practice of also of purifying the love, compassion, joy, and all sensations. According to Buddhism, the Buddhist Abhidharma, no matter whether north and uh, south, you find in Visuddhimaga, in Abhidharma Kosha, the same principle. The uh, Upeksha, Samskara Upeksha, when we speak of Brahma Viharas, we speak of Samskara Upeksha, not of the Vedana Upeksha. Now, uh, the uh, Brahma Viharas come after explaining the fourth dhyana. We have seen also that uh, according to this tradition, the Kashmiri Yoga of which uh, Kumaraj, in which Kumaraj Yoga was trained, uh, the Metta Bhavana actually starts with the fourth dhyana. Why? We have explained in the fourth dhyana there is no place for attachment to sensations. The fourth dhyana does not give to a meditator any uh, opportunity to cling to sensations because uh, due to the neither pleasant nor unpleasant sensations and due to the uh, perfect uh, balance of the mind, which is 
has no disturbance of in breath and out breath and uh, and uh, pleasant or unpleasant sensation and uh, the uh, concentration is uh, perfected together with the uh, uh, Sati Sampajana, together with mindfulness and awareness, which the, all together they do not allow mind to be uh, holding to sensations. So that is why we have explained in the Yogacara tradition, which is also in a way connected to this Kashmiri yoga tradition, in which uh, uh, the uh, Kumarajiva was trained, and it is also not by chance that uh, Asanga, Vasubandhu, they come from uh, Pushpapura, uh, which was uh, closely connected with Gandhara, Kashmir. Hmm? So, uh, uh, in this tradition, the fourth dhyana is called the Nirvana Sadrisha. It is similar to Nirvana. It is not Nirvana, but it is like Nirvana. Because this uh, Samskara Upeksha has been perfected. No place for non-balance of sensations. So also no place for non-balance of mind. With this perfect balance, then one practices the Brahma Viharas to purify the sensation. When the sensations are purified, the mind becomes purified. We have also explained in the teachings of the Shravakas, of the disciples, uh, as uh, Halidavasa Sutta explains and so on, and Abhidharma Kosha explained the same, you cannot use Brahma Viharas for uh, liberation, for body. You have to add the practice of the uh, four uh, bases of mindfulness, which brings into the practice of Brahma Viharas the anatta, the idea of uh, non-self, which is the content of liberation in Buddhism. In Buddhism, no matter whether we are disciples or we are bodhisattvas, we have realized Buddhism when we have realized the non-self. Not uh, just intellectually, but by uh, transformation of consciousness which in Yogacara is called uh, Vijnana Parinama. Very important concept you will find also in Samkhya and in uh, uh, many trends in Indian Yoga. Uh, the process of attaining the body is the process of transformation. Transformation of mind on the base of transformation of sensations by uh, making the sensations balanced, not allowing the mind to be disturbed, one actually attains the liberation. So this is the importance of Upeksha. In Buddhist tradition, we explain, in Yogacara especially, we explain the process of liberation by process of purifying the grossness, Daushtulyam. Daushtulyam, grossness, has to become prashrabdi 
uninterrupted pressure of the uninterrupted uh, relaxation and clarity plus uninterrupted upeksha not vedana upeksha it does not mean uh, an arahat or a realized bodhisattva is like a zumbi who has no sensations he has sensation but he experiences them in a completely harmonious way so that they do not disturb the mind the mind remains as uh, the buddha always insists remains cool no parila nirvana is a state of coolness but coolness does not mean not experiencing sensations this is a very serious mistake many people do coolness means experiencing sensations in harmony so that the, there is no disturbance of the mind disturbance of the mind is klesha this is actually literal meaning of klesha and no klesha is body no matter how you explain uh, it is the same principle and in buddhism body means uh, what body means uh, to be awakened to be awakened to be in the state of harmony samadhi and the samadhi is automatically also state of upeksha there cannot be samadhi without samskara upeksha the samadhi is samskara upeksha and this samskara upeksha of samadhi is perfected in the fourth dhyana because no place for disharmony in the mind by what disharmony comes by attachment by thirst by desire because of desire because of desire no contentment and because non contentment no body so uh, this is very important and with this understanding we come to the text so the order of the practice is very similar or almost uh, the same as you will find in the theravada tradition of course the uh, sila is mentioned only by sight because the object probably of this kumaraji was discourse were monks who are supposed to at least to practice the basic sila the 10 uh, 10 uh, the kushala patha the 10 uh, ways of uh, wholesome karma is should be a habit of a monk if it is not he is not really a monk in a real sense he may not keep all the small rules but he will keep the 10 Uh, the wholesome actions that what makes him uh, so to say based or uh, qualified to practice concentration and wisdom then he removes the uh, five hindrances he masters the dhyanas 
in order to master the dhyanas, he has to uh, lessen his uh, uh, thirst, his attachments. That's why the asubha comes first. Then he masters the dhyanas to the fourth dhyana, which is a real dhyana, we have explained, because it has no tendency tendency to impurity of mind has been removed only in the fourth dhyana. Then, after the fourth dhyana, the mastery of the dhyana is based on the uh, uh, practice of kasinas. Practice of kasina is linked to the, uh, uh, the Brahma Viharas, we will see in our text after Brahma Viharas, comes uh, the meditation on the pure. First, meditation on the impure, then, meditation on the pure after Brahma Viharas. After Brahma Viharas, because the Brahma Viharas they purify the feelings, the sensations. When the feelings are purified, one can uh, practice uh, the uh, contemplation of the pure in the impure and contemplation of the impure in the pure. This is a privilege of the one who has mastered these sensations. Normally we can't do it. Uh, great masters of meditation like uh, Shariputra was, it is said he could practice the uh, meditation on Asubha, on the uh, uh, limbs of the Trayatimsha heaven. Hmm? Uh, he visited the Trayatimsha heaven, visited Indra and uh, uh, practiced the meditation on the impure, uh, on these limbs. As uh, Nanda, when he has uh, seen the limbs, uh, nymphs uh, in the heaven, when he sees his wife, he thinks she looks like a monkey. Hmm? <laughs> and, <laughs> but Sariputra, he can practice the... Uh, Meditation on impurity on the nymphs. Such a mastery of mind he has. So, uh, these people, they could not leave the harmony of sensations. So they were ready to face any kind of situation. With, precisely, with samskara upeksha, with uh, detachment, and uh, with harmonious mind. So they were able to engage in uh, all kinds of wholesome activities. It does not mean an arahat. It is a great misunderstanding of Buddhism. Arahat does not practice uh, wholesome actions. He practices innumerable wholesome actions. But he is not attached to wholesome actions. This is a great difference. And this is very often misunderstanding in the Mahayana tradition that Arahat does not practice wholesome. He definitely practices wholesome. It depends on his character. So even the Theravada explains, like Brahmajara, Tika, that they are the Arahats with uh, great paramis and they are arahats with small paramis and the greater the paramis the greater the light of body the light of body of Shariputra of Mogalyana is incomparably brighter than the light of an ordinary arahat because of the power of their paramis and when, you, when we read the Jataka stories, we will see that they have practiced uh, with Buddha in so 
the tradition has it, innumerable past lives. So uh, the Arahat stays in what mind? He stays in Prashrabdi, in clarity and detachment, and he stays in Samsara Upeksha. It is called Chal Anga Upeksha in Visuddhimagga. He has the uh, equanimity in regard to the six bases. And this is all what we experience. The six bases, nothing else. The six bases, they are the bases for sensations and for the mind. And when the sensations and the mind have been purified, the six bases, they have no base for uh, clash, for disturbance, because of the detachment. And as far as Buddhism is concerned, the perfected detachment is based on the direct realization of anatta. In the anatta realization, there is no place for disturbance, for disturbance of the harmony. In the, har the harmony of what? Harmony of experiencing the sensations and on the base of sensations, the harmony in the mind. So, now let us come to the text. Then after, I just say a few words, after this uh, uh, meditation on the pure comes meditation on the Four Noble Truths. The penetration of the Four Noble Truths becomes a natural process when the mind is harmonious, detached, and when it can change sensations, so to say, according to one's need, from uh, according to one's need, according to the uh, conditions, because our needs are based on our conditions. And our conditions are changing, so our needs are also changing. So, uh, uh, then the perfection of meditation, which is based on the insight into the Four Noble Truths, as far as a disciple is concerned, we, uh, this uh, text is is uh, the object of this discourse are the disciples and the object of liberation of disciples is the penetration of the Four Noble Truths. Uh, Bodhisattva also penetrate the Four Noble Truths but his penetration is said to be deeper because he contemplates not the selflessness of persons, but he contemplates the selflessness of all the phenomena, of all the dharmas. Emphasis is here. When one has penetrated the selflessness of all the dharmas, automatically the selflessness of persons is also included. But according to the Mahayana teachers, when one contemplates the selflessness of the persons, one penetrates the selflessness of the phenomena, but not entirely. So the body, the uh, dharmakaya, the body of the dharma, or equality with dharma, as in case of Buddha, is not yet attained. And uh, of course, from the point of view of Mahayana teachers, the equality of the Dharma with Dharma is the highest idea, whatever may be its cost. So, 
the perfection of meditation is based on the supernatural powers. According to the Theravada tradition, body under the body tree, the Shakyamuni Buddha and the previous Buddhas have practiced the supernatural powers, namely the remembrance of innumerable past lives, which gave them insight into the law of karma, and the uh, seeing how beings are born due, due to karma, which is the topic included in the divine eye, Divya Chakshu. By Divya Chakshu, we can learn this, how to see this process of uh, birth and death of sentient beings. So this sequence has a, a logic and it is a living tradition still in a way in Burma nowadays when one learns meditation one is more or less following this same sequence. One learns the dhyanas In the frame of dhyanas, one learns the uh, kasinas, which make it possible to change the pure into the impure and impure into the pure according to one's wish, and which also make possible the access to the practice of the supernatural powers. And the supernatural powers then one can use optimally for attaining the liberation. Because when one has the supernatural powers, one is not bound on the object of the dhyana. The mind has the power of the dhyana, but is not bound to dhyana. When it is bound to dhyana, it cannot leave the nimitta one is using for absorption of the mind. When one has uh, supernatural powers, one remains in the power of the dhyana, but the object one can change according to one's wish. So this makes it possible a much deeper insight into the reality of the non-self than other states of mind. So now come to the explanation of practice of equanimity in our text. We have seen, and this is very important, that our text connects the practice of joy with the practice of contemplation of the, uh, the self-characteristics of all phenomena which is, of course, suchness, tathata. The phenomena are just what they are. The, this is also connected with the practice of upeksha, indeed. For example, in the Majjhima we have the Bhaya Bhairava Sutta, where the Buddha explains himself how he practiced, and he explains he practiced he by just uh, seeing whatever comes, especially in terms of sensations, because they control the mind. Seeing as it as things come without reacting, so he is experiencing terrible, uh, uh, terrible scenes in the middle of the jungle with all kinds of dangers, but he does not move. He uh, just, without changing his posture, he remains in the posture and does not react, just observes 
how his uh, these different terrifying scenes work on him on his mind without being affected so uh, this is how buddha has perfected his upeksha uh, not reacting In the Theravada tradition, the Upeksha is the last of the ten paramis. The ninth is Metta and the tenth is Upeksha. Upeka. And uh, how did the uh, Buddha practice Upeka? He practiced Upeka precisely as Bhaya Bhairava Sutta explains just by not reacting to all kinds of sensations, all kinds of uh, different uh, perceptions he had, and uh, keeping the mind in balance. Upeksha is a state of balance. All, according to Buddhism, all kushala mind, all wholesome states of mind, or healthy states of mind, have this balance of upeksha. That's why upeksha purifies the mind. It brings balance to the mind, because being in upeksha means not reacting, not holding to the pleasant sensation, not uh, forcefully rejecting the unpleasant sensation, experiencing them with detachment. So, uh, according to our text, the purpose of metta is to remove hate. And while removing hate, one has to be aware, has to have upeksha. To be aware is to have upeksha, in a way, because awareness is wisdom, and wisdom ripens with upeksha. This is very important to understand. So, uh, the root of the Brahma Vihara practice is wisdom. And the wisdom ripens with upeksha. So the upeksha allows to experience metta, which removes hate, without attachment to love, which is the most pleasant sensation. Everybody wants love. Nobody is free from this desire for love. Everybody wants love, but love without attachment is wisdom. And this wisdom is brought to the mind by this factor called Upeksha, which makes the love wholesome. Love is, as Socrates says, is the father, father of love, is wisdom, and the mother of love is misery. So it is a mixture of wisdom and misery. And how it becomes pure wisdom? By Upeksha. by loving but detachment. So Upeksha brings purity into love. Now compassion is to remove violence.
But if there is not enough wisdom in compassion, then compassion will be spoiled by self-pity. Visuddhimagga explains very clearly. The self-pity brings disharmony into the mind. Now, who protects the mind from this disharmony? Upeksha, again, by practicing compassion with Upeksha, the compassion becomes purified. The uh, joy, especially in its form of mudita, kind of sympathetic joy, brings harmony to the mind joy is uh, also most pleasant state of mind but joy with wisdom joy with wisdom removes boredom, arati, removes jealousy, removes miserliness. But joy without wisdom, in its uh, kind of a negative form as euphoria, is also unhealthy state of mind. Excessive joy, also in Indian Chinese medicine, same principle, is what makes the heart sick. The joy uh, releases tension from the heart when it is wise joy. But if the joy is not a wise joy, it will afflict the heart. So Indian and Chinese medicine, same principle. So, uh, without uh, upeksha, the joy will not bring harmony to the mind. It can even bring aggression. So, this is the necessity of upeksha. According to Nagarjuna, this is the Visuddhimagga perspective. According to Nagarjuna and the Northern tradition repeated by most of the important Chinese teachers like Hui Yuan, Zhe Yi, the uh, Metta and Karuna remove Mityadrshti, remove the wrong view. This is very interesting. According to Abhidharma, no matter whether Abhidharma Kosha or uh, Theravada Abhidharma, the uh, wrong view is based on greed, desire. We have wrong view because we have uh, greed, we have desire. And desire is, uh, in the form of greed, is what brings the disharmony into the mind. This is very important to understand. That's why Buddha explains the cause of suffering on the base of Trishna, which is another word for greed. Greed means Trishna. Trishna means greed. Because we are thirsty, we have parilaha, we have fever. And the fever is the synonym of the kleshas, of the trouble. Kleshas literally means trouble.
And what is the trouble according to Yogacara tradition? Very much emphasized in Mahayana. The source of trouble is Daushturya, the grossness of the mind. And the grossness of the mind is based on the grossness of sensations. We have love, but defiled love. We have compassion, but defiled compassion. We have joy, but defiled joy. Why? Because of the uh, uh, misunderstanding of wisdom of Upeksha. Upeksha actually literally means Iksha means seeing, Upa means near and know. Like Upagati, huh? it can be used as a negation, the same Upa prefix, same prefix Upa can be used as negation in Sanskrit. So both these meanings are there, not seeing and seeing closely. When we not see in terms of defilement, we see closely. When we see with defilements, we see from far away. And to have body means to see without trouble, without defilement without losing the harmony. So this harmony, how to get into this harmony? When we study the Visuddhimagga, you start practicing metta on yourself and on the, your close friends, or family, you uh, uh, karuna with uh, some uh, symbol of suffering which has affected you, mudita on someone who has who is enjoying what you would like to enjoy, and upeksha you start with a neutral person, same like here. When you see a neutral person, you have kind of neutral feeling. You neither attached nor you have no inclination to attachment, you have no inclination to hate. And in, according to Visuddhimagga, you do this by contemplation karma, contemplation of karma. This person, no matter whether you like him or you dislike him, he is Kama Sako Kama Dayado. He is the, the karma is his own and he is the inheritor of his karma. Yat Yat Kama Karisati Kalyanam Va Papakam Va Tasa Dayado Bhavisati Whatever karma he will do, the evil karma, the good karma, he will become the inheritor. His mind is inheritor of that karma. He carries it in uh, this uh, tradition, in the form of the bijas. Hmm? as uh, Sautrantika Yogacara emphasizes, it uh, plants the seeds in his mind which he carries from existence to existence. So if he has the predominance of the kushala, of the healthy feelings and healthy mind, karma, then he will experience more happiness. If he has more unhealthy, then he will experience more misery. Usually, 
we have kind of balance. We have done a uh, lot of kusala karma, we have done a lot of akusala karma. So uh, what comes, whether happiness or uh, misery, very hard to gauge. Because so many karmas. The healthy karma, however, makes the seed of happiness in the mind, the unhealthy karma, the seed of misery. And the karma is objective. Objective means it does not cling and it does not reject. So, uh, one who practices here, as we have seen, Kumarajiva has tendency to start with the general and come to the individual, while normally we start with individual and go to the general. So this is also kind of a tendency in the northern tradition. Northern tradition emphasizes much more than the Theravada tradition emphasizes the uh, uh, correct understanding. The correct understanding should be the guiding principle for practice. So uh, the practice should be based on correct understanding. So uh, here we start with the uh, contemplating one characteristic of sentient beings without paying attention to suffering or happiness. And of course this one characteristic is best to be understood by contemplation of karma. And then he says exactly what I try to explain that the joy is like a child, it is always pampered, he will become infatuated, unrestrained and spoiled. Hmm? If one experiences suffering, he will be anxious, fearful, weak and emancipated. Therefore, one should sometime let go both love and resentment. So, this is practice of uh, equanimity. In the Bodhisattva tradition, this practice of equanimity, as Madhyanta, Vibhanga, for example, Asanga explain, is based on the Tattva Darshana. We have explained in already in Abhidharma Kosha, we have the two in meditation, most important is mastery of two kinds of attention. The Adimokshiki, Manasikara, attention based on resolution and tattva manasikara attention based on facts as they are so like metta we practice based on adimokshiki manasikara we determine that all beings are have potential of happiness as kumarajiva is teaching and we actually see all these beings with this uh, potential which ha can make them happy. So we actually see them happy because we contemplate this potential. But uh, the Upeksha is based, is said to be based on the Tattva Manasika. The karma is the fact. Whether we understand it or not, it is a fact. Uh, from the point of view of the Bodhisattva practice, the Madhyanta Vibhanga links this Tattva Darshana, seeing things as they are, with the idea of non-duality. This is also part of the uh, detachment practice. We are detached because we do not differentiate between our own and that of others. 
our own feelings, our own mind, and the feelings and the mind of others. Then, because of that, we can work on our own purification and also on the purification of others. And it is done by nishprapancha, by not indulging in prapancha. Prapancha is multiplication of perception and feelings or sensations based on greed, on desire. So when one sees things just as they are, as Bhaya Bhairava uh, ex Sutta explains, just sees as it comes, not holding to the pleasant, not uh, rejecting forcefully the unpleasant, then one can attain a perfect state of samprajanya, awareness. Awareness is a synonym of wisdom. The body is a state of awareness, non-interrupted awareness. One who has body, has real body. In Chinese tradition we speak of satori, but satori is only the means, method for attaining the real body. The real body is a continuity. Continuity in the pure state of mind. And this pure state of mind is based on not grasping for sensations. So it means to detach is the process of purifying the karma. And purifying the karma is only possible by wisdom. We cannot purify the karma by willing. So, uh, just like in Visuddhimagga, Visuddhimagga explains, just like the good mother handles the child, so a good meditator handles the sensations. When the child is born, the good mother gives it all compassion because she knows it is completely helpless without her. When it grows, it gives all the love it needs to gain self-confidence. When it is successful and uh, can stand on its own feet, she rejoices. And when it gains independence, then she lets go. She does not impose herself on her child. So she has a perfectly harmonious relation with her child. The child loves her without obstacle and she loves the child without obstacle. A perfect harmony between the mother and the child. The similar with meditator in handling his sensations, his emotions. He uses love without attachment. He uses compassion without self-pity. He uses joy without uh, getting stuck. And all this is based on contemplating with wisdom with detachment. So, uh, I have explained the uh, practice of love and compassion 
according to Nagarjuna, brings to the mind the right view. And the practice of joy and equanimity brings to the mind uh, the uh, detachment. So the right view is a base for detachment. Detachment is not possible without the right view. And the right view is possible because we have love and compassion. So due to love and compassion, one has joy. And when one has joy, in the, we have seen one contemplates the real characteristics of all the dharmas, the tathata, and one detach. If one can detach, one is beyond uh, the uh, grasping for pleasant sensation and forcefully removing the unpleasant sensation. So practice equanimity in order not to let these shortcomings of suffering and happiness arise. So uh, according to Yogacara Bhumi Shastra, the practice of uh, the four Brahma Viharas is Sat Purusha Bhavana, is the practice of the noble man, of the good man. One well, to be a good man means uh, to uh, have uh, correct ideas about uh, what is life about. And when one has correct ideas what love is about, then one has a wise detachment. And when one has a wide detachment, one can see things as they are and accept, endure. Uh, the uh, endurance, as we have explained in the Visuddhimagga, is the essence of metta. In our text, endurance is the essence of joy. In order to be, have real joy based on wisdom, one has to endure. And uh, endure based on the right view. In, for example, in the Jatakas, we have Loma Hamsa Jataka. Very interesting, which explains the Upeksha Parami, how the Bodhisattva practiced Upeksha Parami. Also, similar idea you will find in uh, Chula, Dharma, Pala, Jataka, and other Jatakas. The Buddha practice perfect endurance or tolerance based on wisdom. Without the wisdom, we cannot really endure. And what is interesting about this Lomahamsa Jataka, in Lomahamsa Jataka, the Buddha is Ajivaka, extreme ascetic, naked ascetic in the forest, living together with wild beasts and being uh, completely detached, but practicing wrong view. He has some vow, some adhisthana, like in the times of Buddha, many ascetics said adhisthana to be like a cow, like a dog. 
So he is, has this kind of Adishtana, I don't remember what kind, and practices extreme asceticism. Until he, like Buddha himself, he is at the verge of the death. He experiences almost directly the process of dying because of malnutrition. Now, uh, when he is about to die, he changes, he sees the nonsense of practicing a certain vow, like even in India today, many great ascetics practice a vow of lifting the hand and never putting it down for a year even. It is still practiced. Of course, it brings terrible will, but the will is helpful, but also harmful, because a will is karma. Accumulation of will is karma. And if it is done without wisdom, then it brings can bring one to hell. So when he is about to die, Bodhisattva sees the nimitta of hell, the fire of hell. So he renounces his uh, vow and is immediately reborn in heaven. So the Jataka describes. He is uh, uh, born in heaven using uh, the logic of Nagarjuna because he has love and compassion. To be born in heaven, one has to have love and compassion. Nobody can be born in heaven who has no love and compassion. So, love and compassion is the base for, for right view. You may have, if you have love and compassion, you will not do any harm not harm to yourself and not harm to others. And that is the right view. So, uh, according to Buddhism, Upeksha overcomes tendency to agata. Agata, how to say agata? Maybe excitement. Huh? It will be the best translation. So, uh, because one has upeksha, one is not excited. One has no bitterness. Maybe even a better translation is one has no bitterness in the mind. So, because of that, as Samyutta Nikaya explains, uh, one can practice mindfulness effortlessly, anabhoga. When one, what is the practicing mindfulness? effortlessly. It is nothing else but sampajanya, the awareness. And uh, there is no awareness without, as far as Buddhism is concerned, without the right view. Why? Because as in Samkhya, similar in Buddhism, the awareness is based on tattva darshana. However, one explained the same principle. When one has a tattva darshana, when one has seeing according to the facts, one can detach. If 
one does not see according to the facts, one will not detach. And because one will not detach, one will be subjected to the turmoils of sensations which bring turmoil to the mind. So, uh, next paragraph explains that by practicing the dhyana, we are in the stage where we have, uh, according to this sequence, we have already mastered the dhyana. One can have mana. It is very common, especially among the practitioners. They develop mana, asmimana. They have realized something the others don't have. They have the jhana. So they are different. According to Buddhism, the mana, similarly, like uh, the wrong view, is based on greed. We have mana and we have wrong view because we have greed. If we don't have greed, no place for mana, no place for wrong view. This is a Buddhist psychology. So, if one has mana, one cannot practice tattva darshana, one cannot practice detachment, therefore one is destroying this uh, uh, two characteristics, one practices, two characteristics is one differentiates people as good looking or ugly, as good or bad, as those who are uh, great, as those who are uh, uh, inferior. Hmm? Because of that, one destroys the equanimity. Because one destroys equanimity, one destroys wisdom. One destroys awareness. What awareness? We have not chosen to be like that, like we are. We have what we are, what we are, because we are a result of our karma. But karma in Buddhism is, is not a passive state. Karma in Buddhism means active state. This is a great difference. We can change the karma. We can change the karma by acting wisely. Acting wisely is acting with upeksha. But upeksha cannot be really practiced without understanding metta, karuna, mudita. This is very important. So next week, now we have already surpassed our time, so next week we will finish the upeksha, which is very important, and go to the next chapter, which is meditation on the pure. Meditation on the pure must be linked to the beginning, which is meditation on the impure. When you master the sensations, when you purify the sensations by practicing the dhyanas and the brahma viharas, then you can see good in the bad, you can see bad in the good, You can see uh, beauty in ugliness. You can see ugliness in beauty. And this is 
ripeness. This is ripeness of awareness. Okay, so uh, let us finish here for today and uh, if there are any questions we can go on them. If there are not questions we will just transfer the merits as usual and uh, continue next week. Hmm? So Supriya will read the questions if there are any. Uh, no questions in the chat box uh, so far. Okay. Chetso was always uh, asking. Let me mm. see if she has something interesting to say. Mm. Hello, Bhante. Thank you for the class. Um, no, just at the moment, I don't have any questions. Okay. So let us Thank you so much. Let us uh, do the transference of merit practice and uh, Thank you. Uh, we will meet uh, next Wednesday as usual. Huh? And let us pray for the uh, uh, better times in India and everywhere in the world so that uh, there is less suffering and more joy. Eta vata cha amehi sambhatam punya sampadam sabbe deva anumodantu sabha sampati siddhya Eta vata cha amehi sambhatam punya sampadam sabbe bhuta anumodantu sabha sampati siddhya Eta vata cha amehi sambhatam punya sampadam sabbe satta anumodantu sabha sampati siddhya Aka Satta Chabumata Deva Naga Mahidika Punyanta Nanumoditwa Chiramrakantu Loka Sasana Aka Satta Chabumata Deva Naga Mahidika Punyanta Nanumoditwa Chiramrakantu Desana Aka Satta Chabumata Deva Naga Mahidika Punyanta Nanumoditwa Chiramrakantu Tumamparam Devo Vasatukalene Sasa Sampati Hotucha, Pito Bhavatulo Kocha, Raja Bhavatudam Niko, Sadu Sadu Sadu. So, uh, see you next week. Have a wonderful week and uh, hope you, we all stay healthy so that we can have some contribution to this world. Hmm? Okay. Sad, sad, sad. Thank you, Bante. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Thank, Thank you. you, everyone. Thank you, Bhante.